Dan Hillenbrand was born as the youngest of seven children into a family of hardworking, forward thinkers in the small Midwestern town of Batesville, Indiana. By the time Dan was born in 1924, the second generation family business had put the Hillenbrand family into a prominent role of business and civic leaders in their hometown. It is from this place that Dan would draw on the skill and determination of his father and brothers and where he gained an appreciation of the value that each and every person brings to a business and a community. Dan never understated the role that his upbringing had in making him the successful business leader that he became. Dan truly believed in and lived up to the motto of work hard, play hard. He did a lot of both. Dan knew how to have fun and especially enjoyed seeing others have fun around him. He had a sense of humor. One day uh, we were in a corporate review meeting and all of a sudden uh, he always brought his dog Muggsy, the bulldog, to the meetings. And Muggsy decided to chew on the leg of my chair. And after the uh, meeting was over, which was probably a couple hours, he came over and said, uh, I understand, Mug I saw Muggsy chewing on your chair. I said, yeah, in a few more minutes, I was going to be on my butt. And he said, oh, all he was doing was antiquing the chair, that's all. He also knew, however, that in order to have fun, work had to be done. So I worked with him very close, you know, and I think I really got to know him very well, both from a business perspective and, and also as a person. And uh, I can truthfully say there's nobody I respect it more from a business aspect than I did Uncle Dan. He was. Uh, Truly really one of a kind, very successful, uh, very unique, uh, good man. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, Dan knew it was time to get to work, to work for his country, and so he did. In July of 1943, about a week shy of his 20th birthday, Dan enlisted in the Army Air Corps. He volunteered, walked right in and said, I want to serve my country. Dan's assignment would be to fly supplies to the U.S. troops in a C-46 over some of the most treacherous terrain on the planet, still considered the most dangerous route ever assigned to air transport. Dan flew it for two and a half years while living in the harshest of conditions in hot, leaky tents. Dan was shot down twice and made it back. Along the way, he earned the American Theater Ribbon, Pacific Theater Ribbon, the Victory Medal, and Good Conduct Medal. He also earned three Bronze Stars, two Air Medals, and Distinguished Flying Cross for showing real courage in the face of death. When Dan returned home from the war, his father and brothers, who had been busy working for the family business, said, welcome home, now get to work. When Dan began his career at Hillenbrand Industries in 1946, total company sales were $2.6 million and net income was $128,000. Dan was uh, a very uh, a strong man in terms of uh, the vision he had for the company. He was quite a visionary. He, he intended to grow our company very significantly and he did. In 1964, Dan took over the Batesville Casket Sales Department. And that year, sales were 12 million and net income was 1.3 million. He quickly reorganized the sales department by expanding the number of territories, greatly increasing the number of sales representatives, and spearheading the development of a new product line called Monogard. When he decided that the casket company had to be able to compete with each local casket company, and he said, okay, how am I gonna do this? First thing, I want to be have some manufacturing cost advantage. And once I have the manufacturing cost advantage, then I can afford to put in this warehouse system so that I can deliver a casket to any funeral director in the United States within 24 hours, and no competition could beat us. And that's what drove him to such a dominant place in the casket business. In 1969, Dan was named president of Batesville Casket Company. During his eight years directing sales and as president, sales increased from 12 million to 49 million. In 1971, Hillenbrand Industries became a public company. And he always said, you know, if we do the job, the share price will take care of itself. And amen to that, you know, I mean, that's, everybody can have excuses, but you do the job, you increase those earnings, you increase the revenue, 
and you have a great culture, and uh, you got a good business. He was actually the best CEO I've ever seen or read about. Uh, uh, during his tenure, during the vast majority of his tenure, our company was in the top 10% of the New York Stock Exchange companies for a total shareholder return, both on an annual basis and a 10-year cycle basis. Uh, remarkable. He's the one that took the foundation that his three older brothers built and his father built and turned it into the successful company that it is today. Uh, he's the one that actually, if you were a shareholder, when we first went public, he's the one that created your basic wealth for you, you know, with the ownership of our stock. He took over a company that was around $250 million and he built it into a Fortune 500 company. By 1984, sales had grown to 485 million and Hillenbrand Industries became a Fortune 500 company. During the 17 years with Dan Hillenbrand as CEO, Hillenbrand Industries sales grew from 76 million to 884 million. Uncle Dan was a, a competitor. He hated to lose, but when it came time to business, he wanted to do one thing. He wanted to make sure that our customers were satisfied because he knew that's how to grow a business. Dan Hillenbrand was a unique person, uh, a high integrity, and he was a real competitor. I remember when Hillrom had 92% market share and he was still looking for a couple more points. Most important to Dan Hillenbrand, though, was the love of his life. Mary Homan Hillenbrand, whom he was married to for 62 loving years. She was his soulmate, and they made a stunning couple. Perhaps Dan's proudest achievement was that which he and Mim accomplished together, raising three lovely daughters, Diane, Lynn, and Janet Clare. He loved watching them grow and especially enjoyed spending time with them in the years after his retirement. Dan also relished in seeing his six grandchildren become adults and have children of their own. He once commented how no one would know the happiness he felt to have lived long enough to get to meet his great-grandchildren. Dan Hillenbrand, loving husband and father, successful businessman, generous benefactor, and patriot. Your life and legacy is celebrated today and shall be for many years in the future.